I'm proud to announce that our next keynote is from our amazing CNCF graduated project maintainers. During these project updates, our maintainers will showcase the latest exciting updates that you won't want to miss. So sit back and get ready to see some familiar faces go over the latest in CNCF graduated projects. Hello, KubeCon. I'm Keith, here to give you an update on the Istio project. We've been hard at work, making the world's most popular service mesh even better. Six months ago, we promoted Istio's ambient mode to production-ready status. And today, we're excited to announce that ambient is officially GA. This milestone is both a promise of stability to our users and a signal of our community's confidence in ambient's quality. And the good news doesn't stop there. Our vibrant and diverse community has been busy improving Istio as a whole. We've added new resiliency features, streamlined our installation options, and promoted many of our longtime APIs to V1. There has never been a better time to become an Istio user or contributor. To learn more, visit our kiosk, check out our contributors' booths, or go to istio.io to see how you can get started or get involved. Hello, KubeCon. My name is Ulin Vasilev, and I'm the Community Manager for Project Harbor, the Cloud Native Registry, and one of the 26 graduated projects here at CNCF. In June, we released Harbor T11. We added so wanted feature of SBOM. Yeah, I know we spoke about it even in Chicago, but now you can push your OCI image and alongside with your security scanning, thanks to Trivi, you can create your SBOM with just one click. Thanks to the community effort, now Harbor is localized in Korean for our Korean users. We joined the Linux Foundation mentorship program again with two projects. So if you want to join us and help the project, scan the QR code or visit goharbor.io slash community to find out about our main link list, our community meetings, and about our Slack. As always, you can find us at the maintainers track, our lightning talk, or the project pavilion area. Thank you very much. Hi, KubeCon. Cert Manager is x 59 certificate automation solution for Kubernetes. I'm delighted to announce that Cert Manager just graduated, which means that we're now recognized as one of the top tier CNCF projects. Cert Manager is more than just water controller. It's actually more of an ecosystem, which means that there are always ways in which you can use more Cert Manager in your cluster. For example, you can install one of the third-party issuers, or you can install one of our Cert Manager sub-projects, like Trust Manager, Approval Policy, CSI Driver, and so on. Lastly, for experts, it's also possible to write your own integrations and to use more Cert Manager that way. So if you're interested in Cert Manager, please visit our website through the QR code or visit us here at QCon at the Cert Manager booth and get one of these physical certificates. Hi, my name is Thomas Labarcias. I'm very excited today to talk to you about the last news from Falco, the runtime security project of the CNCF. Since the graduation at the last KubeCon EU in Paris, the development has been focused on the performances and the stability to provide our fellow adopters the best user experience as possible. For example, we integrated useful metrics in the Prometheus format, an automatic selection of the best driver for your system, and a new collector to enrich the captures with Kubernetes metadata. Our community worked hard one more time to enrich the possibilities of Falco by integrating new targets for the alerts like Dynatrace, Open Telemetry Traces, Sumologic, and QuickWit. You can also collect Kubernetes audit logs written from Jiki, logs from Jonandi, or use Kafka as source. Please welcome the new component of the Falco project, Falco Talon, a no-code Talon-made response engine. If you want to know more about what's coming, please take a look at the roadmap for the upcoming version one on the Falco website. Thanks to all. Hi, I'm Bill Mulligan from the Cilium project which sets the standard for cloud-native networking, observability, and security with Cilium, Hubble, and Tetragon. Let's check out the updates from the 1.16 release. Cilium now supports multicast, and new NetKit enhancements in the eBPF in the kernel means that container networking is just as fast as host networking. Cilium Service Mesh now supports Gateway API 1.1 and Gamma. Kubernetes Identity Aware security policies in Tetragon and using port ranges for network policy both simplify security. Improvements to performance and memory usage enhance day two operations at scale. Cilium has 12 new end user case studies from the CNCF covering a broad variety of industries. 
Finally, we'd like to thank the over 750 developers who've helped make Cilium what it is today. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Agustin Martinez Fasho. I am a maintainer of the Spire project, and I would like to share with you some updates. We are very excited about all the work that we have been doing around the force rotation and revocation feature that provides control over the signing keys, making easy to recover from a key compromise, as you can quickly force the rotation of the signing keys, and Spire will take care of propagating all the updates needed across the cluster. We have been adding also a lot of new features, including new plugins and performance improvements. Visit our website, join us in Slack, or just go to our GitHub repo to see how easy it is to manage workload identities at scale with Spire. We look forward to seeing you there. Hi. 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 We're the Argo maintainers, and here's our project update. The Argo project is one of the most active in the CNCF with tons of maintainers and contributors. Beyond bug fixes and security releases, we have awesome new features. For Argo workflows, we've added lots of UI improvements, improved integration with OpenTelemetry, and made significant improvements to performance and memory management. For Argo CD, We've been maturing a feature called Progressive Things. With a single configuration, you can configure application deployments to thousands of clusters. Stage changes across those targets in any order with health checks and tests throughout. Even better, we have a new feature to preview application sets before applying them. For Argo rollouts, we just announced support for Gateway API 1.0. That means you can define a rollout and have it work with almost any ingress. Lastly, we are premiering at KubeCon, a brand new documentary about Argo. Check the schedule to join the premiere. Come say hello at the Argo booth in the Project Pavilion. And stay synced. And stay synced. To stay synced. And stay synced. And stay synced. And stay synced. And stay synced. Flux is a graduated project that inspired the concept of GitOps operations by pull request. It's secure and reliable, and that's why companies such as Microsoft, GitLab, and other enterprises rely on Flux to deliver GitOps to their end customers. Since the last KubeCon, we have released 2.3 and 2.4 should be released as well. There were a lot of great updates in 2.3, and I recommend that you check out the blog at fluxcd.io for more details. One big update is the general availability releases of the Helm controller and the Helm Kubernetes CRDs. There is also enhanced Helm OCI support and improved observability of Helm releases. Source controller can now verify notation signatures on Helm charts and OCI repositories. And as of Flux 2.4, the bucket source API is now GA. Notification controller's receivers now work with CD events and we totally refactored the Terraform Open Tofu provider so that you can now bootstrap, update, and drift correct Flux installations even in an air gap. Make sure to scan our QR code to join all of our Flux activities at the booth and at sessions. See you. Hi, everyone. My name is William Morgan, one of the creators of Linkerd, the world's lightest, fastest, and most secure service mesh with a data plane implementation written in Rust to avoid those pesky memory safety vulnerabilities. Speaking of pesky, I'm joined today by project mascot, Linky. Hi, Linky. Get out of here, you little rascal. All right, two exciting announcements from Linkerd land. The first is Linkerd 2.16, which adds support for IPv6, adds a new audit mode for authorization policies, and it adds, most excitingly, retries, timeouts, and metrics to our gateway API types, HTTP route and gRPC route, bringing that implementation up to feature parity with our service profile feature set. The next exciting announcement is Linkerd 2.17, which adds rate limiting. It also adds egress metrics and egress control. So you can get visibility to all the traffic leaving your cluster and you can start putting in place layer seven policies to allow or deny it. The Linkerd maintainers are here today. They're at the project pavilion. Please come by and say hi. We'd love to hear your latest and greatest service mesh ideas. And remember, just say no to memory safety vulnerabilities. Hi there, I'm going to dive into the latest updates of Envoy Proxy, Envoy Gateway, and Envoy Mobile. Control panel resilience has been proved with XDS fill over feature. Multiple new load shape points have been added to overload manager. And Golang filter now supports fuel duplex processing and advanced flow control in Envoy gRPC. 
Additionally, Watson filter can now be used as an upstream filter, and there are a lot of improvements for external processing filter. Moving on to Envoy Gateway, which is making it simple to utilize more Envoy proxy features within Kubernetes Gateway API. New features include the backend API for routing to services outside Kubernetes, and the Envoy Extension Policy API, which allows to extend EG using WebAssembly and external processing. Features like IP subnet allow deny MPoS such persistence, improve security and usability. Lastly, Envoy Mobile has supported dynamic forward proxy and improved the flow control, and now supports proxy on Android and introduced the Engine Build API for configuring UDP GRO. Thanks for watching and join the group call. Hi, my name is Andrew Block, a core maintainer on the Helm project. Helm continues to be the backbone of organizations worldwide running applications on Kubernetes, and the project recently celebrated two minor releases, which included a number of features and enhancements. Now, it's been four years since the release of Helm 3. It's solid, it's stable, it's secure, and if you're not on it, you should be, as Helm is now part of the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. But for now, all eyes are on the future in the next version of Helm and Helm 4. Karen's going to share more about Helm 4 and how to get involved in the Helm community. Hi, I'm Karen Chu, the Helm Community Manager. Helm 4 is currently in the planning phase, and we'd love to have your input at our weekly roadmap meetings on Fridays. Join our weekly dev meetings, find the community on Slack, and follow us on Twitter for the latest updates. See you around. Hi, this is Pavel, a core Jaeger maintainer. Jaeger project continues to be easy to run and manage distributed tracing platform. Over the past year, we have been mostly working towards bringing Jaeger closer to the open telemetry project. Now the backend can natively ingest and query OTLP format. Therefore, the entire system provides first-class open telemetry experience. The next major version V2 will be based on the open telemetry collector. It will give users seamless experience to use storage and Jaeger visualization in a custom build of the open telemetry collector for Jaeger. We have done also many small improvements. For instance, the UI now supports uploading traces in the OTLP JSON format. If you are interested in Jaeger, please stop by at the project booth or attend our project session. Hello, KubeCon. I'm Charlie from the Open Policy Agent Project. OPA is the general purpose policy engine which makes adding policy functionality to your applications easier and more consistent. Whether you're authorizing users or enforcing Kubernetes guardrails, OPA offers a unified way to implement policy as code functionality. This KubeCon, we're thrilled to announce OPA 1.0, a milestone release that wouldn't have been possible without our community of users and maintainers. OPA 1.0 is a great place to get started with policy as code, but if you're already using OPA, we've got some powerful tools to help you check and format your policies as you upgrade. OPA Gatekeeper now supports fine-grained enforcement point configurations, as well as a range of improvements to better support Kubernetes validating admission policies. Scan the QR code for all the details about OPA at KubeCon. Don't miss our maintainer track talk, and be sure to visit our kiosk in the Project Pavilion too. Have a great KubeCon. Hello KubeCon. I'm here to talk about Vitus, a graduated project. Vitus is a cloud-native, distributed, horizontally scalable database system built around MySQL. Many large web applications are powered by Vitus, for example, Slack, GitHub, JD.com, and PlanetScale. In the last one year, we have shipped three GA releases and many patch releases. We just announced the general availability of Vitus Release 21, which comes with a ton of new features. We have revamped our getting started guides, we have rebuilt our benchmarking website, and we have added support for many new query constructs. We have a maintainer talk this afternoon. I invite you to attend that to learn more about Vitus. Join us on Slack or GitHub if you would like to become a part of our community. Hola, KubeCon. For almost 10 years, the Fluent ecosystem has been redefining how to accomplish data collection and processing at scale. My name is Eduardo Silva, the creator of Fluentbit a high-performance telemetry agent. Fluentbit allows you to solve all the challenges of logs, metrics, and traces, and more for everything that is a telemetry pipeline. Today, we're announcing the new version Fluentbit 3.2 that is 10% more efficient, which means lower energy consumption, a higher performance, a simplified YAML configuration to build your own pipelines, and for the industry standards like OpenTelemetry, we allow to convert any log to a compatible OTL schema. 
And for processing, we have extended support to a specific open telemetry contexts such as resources and scopes. And finally, we are welcoming the support of two new signals, profiling and binary blobs. Thanks to our community, Fluentbit has been deployed more than 15 billion times. Heartfelt thank you for your support. And don't forget to visit the Fluentbit booth so you can grab your very own Fluentbit t-shirt. Thank you.